Hi, everyone. It is still May 8, 2021, and in five minutes it will be May 9, 2021. 2021. Wow. And we're close to halfway through 2021. Communism is here. And who brought it in? Well, let's listen to this former Facebook executive. Uh, there's a deep connection between money as an instrument of change and what you're doing now at Social Capital. Look, here's the thing. There's about 150 people that run the world. Anybody who wants to go into politics, they're all fucking puppets, okay? <laughs> there are 150, and they're all men, that run the world, period, full stop. They control most of the important assets. They control the money flows. And these are not the tech entrepreneurs. Now, they, they are going to get rolled over over the next five to 10 years by the people that are really underneath pulling the strings. And when you get behind the curtain and see how that world works, what you realize is it is unfairly set up for them and their progeny. You know, I came across this video after doing some research on uh, Marxism, Marx, uh, Lenin, communism. And I came across this one sentence that said 149 men rule the world. And then I came across this video and sometimes I feel like, oh, wow. All right. This is bizarre that, you know, here I am reading that sentence and then this pops up in, you know, the YouTube feed for me to watch. It was strange. Well, it seems, you know, certainly it, the leaders of the world are puppets. That includes Trump. It includes Biden. They take their orders and they execute them. The orders, unfortunately, throughout uh, the last several decades even more, have been the destruction of the United States of America. People who are, let's just call them control freaks, do not like individuals having their freedom. And our freedom is essentially gone. Gone. The censorship that is taking place right now is so, it's scary what's happening. And you know, when I come on YouTube now, I don't like the fact that I have to watch what I say. I'm an American. I am used to just speaking my mind. Now I can't. Now, if you don't have <clears throat> the opinion that has been sanctioned, the official narrative, if you're not speaking that, well, you get deleted, put down the memory hole. That is happening more and more frequently. It's happening at a pace now that should uh, frighten everyone. Now, I know an awful lot of people say, oh, don't get scared. That's what they want you to, you know, feel. Look, uh, I don't care what they want me to feel. I'm going to feel what I feel. We, we as Americans... We lived in the freest country ever. And yes, I do believe that we had a responsibility to ensure that that freedom continue. Well, it hasn't. There's a reason why in that Constitution they put 
the First Amendment as the first. Because when you do not have freedom of speech, you are no longer free. And that's where we now reside, which to me is so heartbreaking and infuriating at the same time. So, you know, let's just listen to a few minutes of another um, whistleblower. Well, I shouldn't say another because he's certainly not a whistleblower, but a whistleblower, Facebook. Let's listen to what he has to say. The government that seems to be the best right now at setting a framework and sort of reining in behavior online that they yeah. is China. So how does the United States walk that line between uh, protecting the democracy and the safety of people and yet not becoming so heavy handed uh, that the rule of law as it exists in the United States gets violated. Well, you know, the thing that I'd say is that the United States is walking in the same direction as China. We're just allowing private companies to monitor us left, right, and center. You know, just because it's not the state doesn't mean that, you know, there isn't harmful impacts that could come yeah. if you have one or two very large companies monitoring and tracking everything that you do. So does Facebook need to be broken up? You know, we don't, we, we, when we look at big things like electricity or water or public roads, we don't talk about breaking up, you know, a, a water utility or an electrical company. We okay, he's young. We used to break up the big companies, AT&T. Um, and this is why I have been saying that Facebook and Google and Twitter, they are government, government entities fronting as private companies. When you have the censorship that is taking place right now on Facebook, on all of these, on Google, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, um, and they're not broken up, you know that our government, well, our government can't suppress our freedom of speech. Oh, but Google and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, they can because they're private companies. I'm not sure I'm going to have the time to read this article. And if I don't, then I will read it tomorrow the military origins of Facebook. Understand, they are government entities. And even if they weren't, even if they weren't, even if they were private companies, our government regulates all companies. But they all have government contracts. And our government could put conditions on these so-called private companies to not suppress freedom of speech. But they don't. These are fronts for government to silence those who speak the truth. So, regulate it and put, uh, you know, put consumer safety first. And so, you know, whether or not we should break up Facebook, I'm sort of, you know, either way on that. But what I do think is that we do need regulations in the same way that certain industries that have become so important because of their, you know, their vital importance to business and people's lives and the nature of their scale, we put in place rules that put consumers first. You can still make a profit, you can still make money, but you have to consider the, the, the rights and safety of people. There's that debate's going on right now with vaping, for example. Uh, but your point's broadly well taken. And you're banned from Facebook. I'm banned. Stuff. You know, after I came out as a whistleblower and started working with the authorities, I got banned on Facebook and also Instagram. And I still am. Because this, so is, what, this, is, this, is, this is what happens when you have a company that does not have to follow due process. If you have somebody who comes out and criticizes it, they can just eviscerate you, uh, you know, from their platform. And there's, there's no, you don't have any rights in that situation. Mm. 
Um, and, and I sort of question, you know, should we be trusting a company like this, who bans whistleblowers, who are working with the authorities about wrongdoing that's happening on our platform, you know, and try to shut down what they're saying? Sounds like there's a case for censorship happening, potentially. Potentially, yeah. Potentially? No, it's happening. I'm going to play this full uh, speech, Alex Berenson, and listen carefully to what he is saying. And it's so interesting to me to see uh, the few on the left, the Democrats, uh, that have integrity, who now their only platform is Fox News, CPAC, the conservative Republican platforms, that's where they now can speak, but they are, well, eviscerated from that left side. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking on freedom of press, please welcome Alex Berenson. Thank you. Um, it's good to be in Florida, where it's 80 degrees. Um, I'm honestly as surprised as any of you that I'm here. If you knew my voting record, you'd think I should be speaking at the ACLU, not CPAC. Um, but times have changed, and the New York Times, where I used to work, has changed. Um, I never would have imagined being on Fox regularly while the Times either ignored me or tried to bash me. Um, but. But it's not me, it's, it's the Times. And columnists at the New York Times now regularly call for censorship. When you hear realities are, that's censorship. When you hear deplatforming de Fox News, trying to get cable companies to drop Fox from their basic tier so that people have to pay extra for it when they don't have to pay extra for MSNBC or CNN, that's censorship. It, whether it's government controlled or not, it's censorship. And the Times actually, and other elite media outlets have gone beyond that now. Uh, reporters spend significant amounts of time looking for people, public figures usually, but not always, who've said things they consider, uh, you know, words they consider bad, or have spouted ideas they consider bad, and trying to flog those people publicly. Um, I, I don't know when that became journalism. Uh, it seems to be journalism now at the New York Times and other big outlets. But these people are frustrated. They're frustrated because they can't control the debate as completely as they would like. Uh, they're frustrated because 75 million people voted for Donald Trump, and they think, you know, they think that's a cataclysm. So they've, so they've actually turned to an even more powerful group. They've turned to big tech. They've turned to Amazon and Facebook and and Apple and Google, the most powerful companies in the world right now, the biggest companies by market cap, the companies that in an information age are the information. And they've asked those places, they've beat on those places to help them censor. It is, it is amazing to me to see journalists asking technology companies for help in censorship, but that's happening. And tech has agreed to this. Um, partly out of ideology and partly because it's in their interest, it seems. And so, so we're, we're at a time where Facebook will dump groups it doesn't like, where YouTube will prevent people from uploading videos that, that have information that runs, quote unquote, contrary to established health advice about COVID, when in reality that advice has changed over and over again, the guidance about masks, the guidance about whether antibodies are protective, the guidance about whether school openings may be dangerous. That's changed over and over again. But whatever today's official version is, you are in trouble if you try to speak out against it. And in June, Amazon would not let me publish this book. I was very lucky. Elon Musk and other people spoke up for me, and Amazon relented. But, but this censorship is still happening. Uh, there's lots of people who can't get their stuff published on Amazon. Uh, and it's not just about COVID. Uh, you may have seen earlier this week, Amazon stopped selling a book from a conventional publisher, a conservative, but a conventional publishing house. 
uh, that was about, uh, 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 it's called When Harry Became Sally. It's about uh, transgender, the transgender movement. And they decided for some reason they didn't like it and weren't going to sell it. Um, so all of this, you know, it's happening together. And I'm not saying that, you know, that, that, that Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos are having a, a conference call about this. But it is by design. It is, it is squeezing the flow of information. And it's extraordinarily dangerous for big companies to do this when they're quasi-monopolies. But journalists, the people who should be speaking out against this, are cheering it on. So this is especially true from my point of view when it comes to COVID, because these companies, notably Amazon, but Facebook too, uh, Google too, they all profit from lockdowns. They profit from keeping you in your house, from destroying gatherings like this. And when ideology and profit are running the same way, it's almost impossible to get people to consider, reconsider their actions or consider the negative consequences of their actions. So, so what can we do? You know, there's, there's some of us out there who see these risks, and we're trying to talk about it. We're trying to fight about it. Um, my badge says I'm self-employed, uh, which, which is lucky for me. It means that I can, I can speak without having to worry about what the, my ideological, well, you know, my masters at the times want me to say what their ideology of the day is. Um, and there's other journalists out there who are self-employed, and, and we're, I think we're starting to, you know, to fight. But the truth is, the truth is, even though the badge is self-employed, it's not true. I'm employed by all of you. I'm employed by everybody out there who wants facts and data that don't come with an ideological spin. And I'm going to keep doing that. And I know other people are going to keep doing that. And so I am stuck with or have fallen in with or however you want to put it, the conservative movement. Because, because, because right now, you're more committed to freedom of thought and speech and debate than anyone else, and you should be proud of that. It is sad that people who think they know best won't even talk to you and won't even debate you. That's, that's how, are they scared or, or what are they? I don't know, but it needs to stop. Freedom of debate and freedom of speech and freedom of the press, as we know, they're central to the United States. And I'm proud to announce that I'm going to have a book about the pandemic coming out called Pandemia. Regnery is publishing it. Regnery is a conservative publisher. That's not why I picked them. I picked them because I know they're going to let me write the book I want to write. And if it's criticizing Donald Trump, so be it. And if it's criticizing Joe Biden, so be it. And that's a guarantee that nobody else can make right now. So you, you, can, you can buy that book on Amazon right now. You can pre-order it. If Amazon will still sell it in six months, we'll see when it comes out. But one way or another, the truth is going to come out. And hopefully, we'll all be there for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is a very dangerous time we are living. So many who have personal experience with communist nations who came to America for freedom have been speaking out about what is taking place in our country here in the United States. And uh, this is a video, is China's history, America's future. Well, we're there. We are there. This is Helen... Um, Raleigh sits down with Georgia Howe to discuss capitalism lifted um, the Chinese people out of national poverty. Well, it's a very interesting talk. It's only uh, 14 minutes, but I just want to play this portion of it. I have one more question for you, Helen. Are there things you're seeing here in the United States that remind you of communist China? Oh, absolutely. This is this is what worries me the most is uh, like the cancel culture. The cancel culture reminds me of 
happening with cultural revolution in China that um, you, know, you had to suppress different ideas. And you know, we're starting you know with digital book burning, we're canceling great thinkers and great ideas, and we're condemning the entire not we but the woke a crowd, you know, condemn the entire Western civilization. And I'm I'm very concerned that we are on such a self-destructive path. You know, we're just delight our adver adversaries and really um, showing away what's so great about this country and all the beautiful ideas and great thinkers um, that we have you know, generated in this civilization. I, I'm deeply concerned. Um, I never thought in my lifetime I would have to fight for the right to speak, to freely express myself twice in two different countries. And that's actually very depressing. Helen? Very depressing? It is. Now, something happened with the, vo uh, vid um, the audio in this video. And what she was saying in the very beginning is that, you know, we've got a lot of similarities right now uh, between cancel culture and the culture revolution in China. Uh, we just, and I included this in a video that I posted yesterday. We heard from Patrice colors who is one of the founders of Black Lives Matter in a speech in 2010 when uh, somebody I, I guess at a book signing one of her books um, someone said that it reminded me of Mao's little red book and she was well she took that as a compliment and then said you know, it, it, that's what I thought, too. Black Lives Matter is just yet another organization to bring in communism. I mean, Patrice Cullors is a self-admitted, self-avowed, trained Marxist. What are we doing here? Why is it that Americans, most of them, just will not look into anything that is taking place? But those who are not doing anything, they're pulling all of us down. That is what is really upsetting. So, you know, the, the censorship, we may as well be China. And how about uh, Soviets? Are Americans becoming Sovietized? Was it not that Russians finally tired of the Kremlin's lies and hypocrisies that permeated every facet, facet of their falsified lives? This is what we're living. The lies, the hypocrisy that is so now, oh my God, I mean, it just smacks you in the face every single day. And we do nothing. Let me just read these. The 10 symptoms of Sovietism. There was no escape from ideological indoctrination. We're there right now. A job in the bureaucracy or a military assignment hinged not so much on merit, expertise, or past achievement, what mattered was loud enthusiasm for the Soviet system. Well, now you have to have loud enthusiasm for all of the leftist messaging, loud enthusiasm for critical race theory, for Black Lives Matter. You can't have an opinion that goes against that. Wokeness, wokeness is becoming our new Soviet-like state religion. Careerists assert that America was always and still is a systemically racist country without ever producing proof or a sustained argument. And when you ask for evidence, 
then you just get shouted down or laughed at or they try to humiliate you by laughing and and I've seen so I've done so much research and just watching videos of these um, it, it is predominantly on the left what the right does well they don't do anything most don't do anything they're silent and unfortunately those who are speaking out on the right are getting silenced but so this is a a leftist takeover the left communist takeover they'll laugh you know and they have this affect that well it's so obvious that we're systemically racist why can't you see it what are you, you're asking for evidence because you can't see it no can't see it and by the way you know even posting this video I could see this being a violation of the community guidelines on human on, on YouTube so number two the Soviets fused their press with the government <laughs> well <laughs> hello uh, Pravda or truth was the official magnif uh, megaphone of state-sanctioned lies journalists simply regurgitated the talking points of their Communist Party partners that's exactly what is happening here today with our mainstream media they are propagandists for the left in 2017 a Harvard study found that over 90 percent of the major TV news networks covered coverage of the Trump administration's first 100 days was negative 90 percent the Soviet surveillance state enlisted apparatchiks and lackeys to ferret out ideological dissidents Recently, we learned that the Department of Defense is reviewing its rosters to spot extremist sentiments. The right. The U.S. Postal Service recently admitted it uses tracking programs to monitor the social media postings of Americans. CNN recently alleged that the Biden administration's Department of Homeland Security is considering partnering with private surveillance firms considering it has and it has for years partnered with private surveillance firms to get around government prohibitions on scrutinizing Americans online activity it's not considering it's happening and I mean I have a lot on my channel already but just I will link below to this article I'm not going to get to it tonight but I will read it tomorrow because it's really important to know that Facebook and Google and YouTube and Twitter and all of the social media giants they work hand in hand with government with law enforcement with military to censor our speech and to spy on us private and there's an awful lot of private firms involved that you don't even know about so um, yeah and I love it when mainstream media comes out and says well considering they're considering this and well they're considering experiments with geoengineering and can when it's already happening <clears throat> and what's really <clears throat> excuse me it's 
when we need individuals in this country to have a working brain, when we need individuals to be thinking critically, We have instead individuals who are sitting, listening to mainstream media. They listen to these, you know, reports. Oh, they're considering, uh, nah, it'll never happen, not in the United States. No, it is happening. But when you see what's happened to our sky, and still, you know, when, where are Americans when they hear that, you know, they're going to be, they will be sometime in the near future doing geoengineering experiments and, and somehow they missed what was right in front of their face going on, only increasingly so, year after year. You know that we have a zombied people. Okay, the Soviet educational system sought not to enlighten, but to indoctrinate young minds in proper government-approved thought. It's happening. It's happening. Cash-strapped universities nationwide are hiring thousands of diversity, equity, and inclusion staffers and administrators. And it has become an industry. You know, these universities and colleges and public schools, private schools, hiring these independent you know, contractors to come in and do these trainings. And those who are doing the trainings are getting very rich doing it. Their chief task is to scan the admissions hiring uh, curriculum and administration at universities, like good um, commissars, our diversity SARS oversee compliance with the official narrative that a flawed America must confess, apologize for, and renounce its evil foundations. When you see in any country the uh, sudden tearing down of statues and monuments and getting rid of books, um, defund police, you know your country is turning into a totalitarian state. The Soviet Union was run by a pampered elite exempt from the ramifications of their own radical ideologies. Well, we've got a pampered elite. We've got the woke Silicon Valley billionaires. We've got the CEOs of corporations. We've got people like Oprah Winfrey, LeBron James, Mark Zuckerberg, the Obamas, all living in their huge estates. Patrice Cullors, co-founder of Black Lives Matter, just bought in a predominantly white area, Topanga Canyon, Los Angeles, a $1.4 million estate. Has she helped any black community out there? And I'm talking, you know, it, it's, I can't stand that term, black community. It is everyone who is a black American in just one community? No. No. Do I think of myself in a white community? No. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. I'm, it, it just as the select few of the old Soviet nomenclature, 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 blah, 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 blah. sorry, um, they had their DACAs, 
I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. They had their estates. Just as all of those pushing us towards this communist all pushing us towards living in a and it's it, look you know you do a little bit of research you find out what happened in Nazi Germany and and uh Lenin and Stalin's uh, Soviet Union and Mao's China. We're looking at something far worse because of the technology that man has. And it is heartbreaking. Um, all these people who are unaffected by anything that they push on us. Living the high life. The Soviets mastered um, Trotsky and Trotsky'sization. Forget it. I'm tired. I'm sorry. It's 1230 at night and I'm just tired. So how about we just go to, or the rewriting and airbrushing away of history to fabricate present reality. Are Americans any different when they indulge in a frenzy of name changing, statue toppling, monument defacing, book banning, cancel culturing? No. The Soviets created a climate of fear and rewarded stool pigeons for rooting out all potential enemies of the people. Since when did Americans encourage co-workers to turn in others for an ill-considered word in a private conversation? Why do thousands now scour the internet to find any past incorrect expression of a rival? Why are there now new thought criminals supposedly guilty of climate racism, immigration racism, vaccination racism. I mean, look, there are so many examples for each one of these. But Soviet prosecutors and courts were weaponized according to ideology. In America, where and for what reason you riot determines whether you face any legal consequences. Antifa out in Portland? Oh, you don't have to face any any consequences for all of the destruction that you've been doing in Portland. We're going to let you go free. Oh, but we still have Trump supporters sitting in jail for their quote-unquote insurrection. Politically correct sanctuary cities defy the law with impunity. We have so much lawlessness taking place. Ah, oh, forget about, you know, enforcing immigration law. Who cares? Oh, we'll just set up sanctuary cities so that those who come into the country illegally, you have safety in these cities. Americans wake up. Jury members are terrified of being doxxed and hunted down for an incorrect verdict. That's what one of the uh, jurors said on the Chauvin jury. The CIA and FBI are becoming as ideal, uh, ideological as the old KGB. The Soviets doled out prizes, prizes on the basis of correct Soviet thought. In modern America, the Pulitz, Pulitzer Prizes and the Emmys and Grammys, Tonys, Oscars don't necessarily reflect the year's best work. Uh, but usually it's the most politically correct work for from the most work, woke. And uh, CEO of YouTube, Susan Wosicki, Sicky, Wosicki, 
she just gets an award for freedom of expression when she's literally denying freedom of expression? Everything is, well, ass backwards. Whitmer, Gretchen Whitmer, who turned Michigan into a communist state, apparently will or has already received, you know, the JFK Award. They give these awards to those who are implementing the agenda of the 150 men in control, but implementing the agenda of those who want the world for themselves, the new world order. You implement it. You did a good job, Gretchen. We're going to give you this award. Oh, it was um, the award, the JFK uh, Profile Encourage. It was very courageous of you, Whitmer, to hold the line and to suppress and keep control of all of those Michiganders. Good job. That's why they get the awards. The Soviets offered no apologies for extinguishing freedom. Instead, they boasted that they were advocates for equity, <laughs> equity, champions of the underclass, enemies of privilege, and therefore could terminate anyone or anything they pleased. Well, now we have the boasting left, the progressives, the and even those quote-unquote traditional Democrats like Pelosi and all of them in Congress and Biden in the White House literally telling the American people with what they are coming out with, they're saying indirectly, we don't care about the law. We are just going to implement our agenda. I don't know if any of you heard Biden say when asked if he was going to run again in 2024. And now, look, it's only 2021. He's only been in office a little over 100 days. And you have a reporter there asking, asking if he's going to be running in 2024. I think the whole thing was set up for Biden to say, and I don't even know if there's going to be a Republican Party in 2024. Now, that should have really begged questions, maybe. All right, well, we're in trouble. We're in big trouble, really big trouble. Can't emphasize that enough. And I'm, uh, if Americans don't put away all of their insig insignificant differences and stand together and fight like hell at this point to try to reverse what's going on, the speed with which they are destroying this country, destroying Americans, destroying freedom. I try to imagine what this country is going to look like in a month from now. And it's horrifying. Six months from now? So many of us already feel like we're living in a foreign country. And I'm afraid that feeling is just going to get more and more intense. 